Welcome to the Ship Show, part of the Callaway Podcast Network. Here's your host, Jeff Newbarth. And hey, Jeff, how's that 18-year-old Miles the Cat doing? Well, Amanda, he's uh, <laughs> probably sleeping right now. Just fed him. Quite likely. He's uh, He threw up a couple times yesterday. Aww, so that's what he does. Welcome guy. to the Ship Show. Email us, shipshowcallawaygolf.com. Call us, 760-804-GOLF. 760-804-4653. Jeff and Lex here. And look, I'm just going to say it real quick. Uh, very somber week. Um, our thoughts and prayers with the uh, nine who uh, lost their lives in the he- tragic helicopter crash mm-hmm. up in Calabasas. So, But our job is to try to do a golf podcast, so yep. that's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a big windcast edition of the Ship Show. Yeah, pretty big deal today. We had, we had a really good weekend. Yeah, two wins. Um, could have been a third, but mm-hmm. me, you, Finley, <laughs> and Sarah did not bring home any <laughs> hardware other than uh, probably um, hard luck. Um, and lots of fun yeah but no one gives out trophies there's no participation trophies for that tournament i I got some participation ribbons in my day not great yeah but much more important madeline sagstrom won on the lpga tour her first lpga tour win and mark leishman won right here in san diego at tory pines we will have interviews with both of them um after a couple things we need to tell you about because thursday if you want to get a new odyssey stroke lab black or triple track putters you do yeah well you definitely need a new putter (laughs) We can talk about my putter later. Let's talk about these ones first. I don't really want to talk about your putting, Lex. I kind of trying to get it on my mind. I got to the point where I wouldn't watch you putt. I would just watch the ball, ball roll way past the hole. Hey. Um, but I've been using a triple track putter, and I putted pretty well with it the other day. You, you so, did. So uh, I'm a big fan of the triple track number 10. Mm-hmm. Um, Stroke Lab Black has uh, the number 10 is our most popular model on tour. Yep. And the Bird of Prey that uh, Kisner and others are using. The Bop. Um, yeah, the Bop. Uh, but go try these putters. Get into a putter corral. Mm-hmm. And to find out more at odysseygolf.com. Uh, other news this week, our buddy Wesley Bryan, don't call him Wes, or to cost you six grand, returns to <laughs> golf this week after having surgery on a torn labor and missed over a year. Yeah. Uh, the Panama Championship, um, we talked to him a couple weeks ago on our podcast, so we go did. back and listen to that episode if you want to hear more about Wesley. Uh, you definitely want to check that one out. We've had a good mm-hmm. year on pod so far. I think so. You know, we had the first couple on the road, which actually yeah, ended up Francesco in our... Molinari I was going to say, it champion. ended up in our favor because we got some great people on the yeah, podcast. We had Molinari, we mm-hmm. had Wesley, we Annika had Annika Sorenstam, who, who just got the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah, huge award over in Sweden last night. Um, if you follow Mike McGee on social, you'll see every fic- picture mm-hmm. of it. Um, but really, really cool stuff to see. She did a morning show for them this morning. And I oh, want to wow. ask her how that compared to doing a podcast with us next time we catch up with her. Yeah. Um, who else do we have on the show? Well... I felt like we did one more. Oh, we had uh, Kyle Berkshire. One? Oh, yeah, that's the World right. Long Drive yeah, yeah, champion. yeah, yeah. So I we've had like, a we've uh, had a pretty good run. All right, so mm-hmm. let's talk about Tory. The PGA Tour is in our backyard. Yeah. Uh, I still get a little frustrated because I don't get in till Friday because yeah. of traveling. This year was in addition to the PGA show. Went to Chicopee, yes, where it was you did. eight degrees. <laughs> but uh, I will tell you. I had so much fun talking to all the uh, local Bostonians about uh, Alex Cora, their cheating mm-hmm. manager. I'm sure you. I'm sure you did. And yeah. this time, you did not have a coffee cup break in half on you, which is a no, huge improvement over you, two years ago. Did, so, so well, no, that was in November. A year ago, that was in November when that happened. When we were there, wasn't that in the fall? Yeah, November is in the fall. No, we didn't. It wasn't in November. It, was oh, it wasn't this trip. That. Oh, I thought it was this particular definitely trip. Definitely before that. But so, anyways, so so Sean and I go to. The, I'm going to bang on this Dunkin' Donuts because oh, the man. Dunkin' Donuts in Chicopee. Um, <laughs> Sean and I go now purely for our own enjoyment. So I ended up buying a mug there just because I didn't want their st- the the, yeah. the oil I put in my coffee uh, disintegrates styrofoam. So that yes, was my fault, not their fault. So I buy a mug there, no problem. I just say a black coffee and the re- lady on the register immediately rings up two sugars and like two creams. I'm like, oh, no, 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 a black coffee. A black and coffee. she kind of looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, that means just coffee with nothing in it. Which you think you'd Did know if you work at a Dunkin' to Donuts. Go, like, yeah, she took it the... out, she took it out. So then Sean orders a very, very easy order. He orders a coffee with two shots of espresso on it because Lord knows he needs that. Uh huh. And then he did uh, he wanted and half he and half, half and half and two, and two sugars, sugars, raw sugars. Well, let me tell you something. Half and half at this Dunkin' Donuts started a worldwide ordeal. Oh my gosh! They had no idea what half and half this was. This is the second time that that has happened, right. though. So here's they what say, I just don't understand. And then they understand. ask you what half and half is. Right. And so we tried to explain to them what half and half is, and finally Sean's like, "Just, just give me anything <laughs> but skim milk," and, and he sucked it up. Um, have you had an experience at the uh, Chicopee? Dunkin' Donuts? Well, if so, email yeah. us shipshow at callawaygolf.com. It's it's Please. the gift that keeps on giving. 
Uh, no, The Bachelor is the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about that today. <laughs> but special thanks to Benita and Vince, uh, Algis, everybody who welcomed us. Uh, Eddie, I'm going to miss about 50 other people. People could not have been uh, more accommodating. As I say that every time when we get back there, yeah. but they couldn't have been more accommodating. Um, we, we shot some really cool stuff. And you'll be seeing that. We can't announce it yet, but mm -hmm. you'll be seeing it uh, in a very visible platform pretty soon. Yeah. So anyway, back to Tori. Back to Tori. Um, so we played, as I mentioned, me, you, Sarah, and uh, Darth Finley played uh, in the tournament on Sunday, benefiting the Boys and Girls Club, wow. Boys and Girls Club here of San Diego. <laughs> Um, and we had another foursome, which I think those guys may have actually won if they had been eligible for prizes. But they I'm not totally going to mention their names because because okay. they don't you know okay. yeah they don't That's need fine. to do that. Um, even though I will say that the Charm Offensive struggled mightily off the tee, but if you have uh, Tyler Sheen and Matt Browning in your group, you're going to have a long drive every single every hole. Every single hole, we could yeah. hear them sometimes yeah. from our tee box, and it yeah. was like oh yeah. Man. And Nev's only had 16 training aids. I guess I am going to mention them all. <laughs> during the round but uh no it yeah. was awesome awesome playing we played in the group behind them mostly because last year tyler hit into me multiple times so we, <laughs> yeah. we had to put ourselves there um it was not weather wise the the most picturesque day it was a no. little chilly and it got colder as the day went it on. is what i would imagine playing golf in like the uk would be like year round yeah yeah, that's, that's probably a good thing. Imagine. The only thing is that we were in San Diego, so if you drive three miles right. inland, because if you don't know about Torrey, Torrey's right on the cliffs, mm -hmm. and the, the marine layer and the fog was just pounding in. Yeah. Uh, we had a run, though, on, on our back nine, because we, we started off on the seventh hole, where we were nine under for 10 holes. Yeah. So that was pretty spectacular. We just started awful, and we couldn't have finished worse. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. We had just like the worst luck on the, on the first hole and the last hole, for yeah. sure, except Wait, not all of us. Not all of us. The yeah. first hole was a struggle. Let's yeah. yeah, let's be real. There was we didn't warm up. It was cold and whatever. Right, but and there's the no the, the problem is the range was all filled with torpedoes. With torpedoes, so, so they won't we let us on of, it. Yeah. yeah, surprise. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to hit next to all of us. I know. Yeah, and it's not, and it's such a big range of Tory anyway. But for as much as you knock my putting, I did make one really great putt. Yes, you on made the one day. really great putt, and one. you ran about eighteen I by. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna talk to I'm gonna talk to Luke today. But here's here's what I didn't understand, Lex. You were consistently hitting it like like not like an inch or two by like like feet i know multiple feet by i could swing swing softer that green speed was like I something i've never played on and i couldn't adjust I get it. I, clearly i could not adjust clearly but that's like but the rest of my game looked pretty good you your rest of your game was great yeah but it frustrated me because if you would have made some of these putts like you could have had an all-time career round i could have had a career round. and i think it got into your head after a while I yeah I just I couldn't I really had no mental composure I hadn't hit a ball in a month. Yeah, well, so well, well, we we have, excuse, we have a putting green we have a putting green right outside mm -hmm. the studio door here. I expect you to be out there during your lunch break, <laughs> and work on on just speed putting. Remember we did a, a drill last year with Brendan Grace. Yeah. At um oh the gosh. players when we did our shoot, mm -hmm. you should probably go watch that drill. I and he literally should. does not worry about aiming at a hole. All he worries about he puts a shaft down right on the fringe, uh -huh. and you just try to putt to that shaft where it. it Either gently taps it or stops right in front of it. Just work on speed control. Okay. That's all it is. All right. Because your aim was good. It was, my aim was fine. Yeah. As, thanks to my triple track golf ball. Maybe yeah. I need a triple track putter. Well, the triple track putter, you need it with a, we, we decided, Finley and I decided you needed a marshmallow insert because of the, the, the speed you were hitting the ball. Would have done that. Uh, as long as we don't say my new nickname, I think No, we're I'm good. not going to say it. No. I'm not going to say it. That's why Jason's not on the show. All right. But it was a super fun day it was. and lots of money raised. And then we got to go over to the 15th hole. We'll talk about that with Mark yep. Leishman a little bit. But we got to see the last seven or eight groups come through. Yeah. So we saw Tiger. We saw Leishman come through. We saw Rom, where really he lost the, 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 the tournament yeah. with that downhill bunker lie. Yeah. It was uh, we saw Rory come by. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was a great time. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good like way to wind down the week for sure. But yeah. definitely, you know, it was just it was a hard it was a hard day. Yeah, it was I a very think. hard day. So um, just to kind of put a, a you know whatever type of moment on it, um, we were out on probably the fifth hole when our caddy told us that mm -hmm. he got a text uh, talking about Kobe and talking about the accident. And uh, you know we certainly saw the the, the text and stuff that uh, confirmed it a little bit later. Um, kudos to uh, Jim Nance who who had to bring the broadcast mm -hmm. on the air. Kudos to Amanda who yeah. did a great job interviewing Tiger, um, who clearly did not know until his caddy. You know we've seen the shot that Joey Lacava told him when he walked off the 18th green. Yep. Um, you know I saw some people were kind of criticizing Amanda for it, and and I, I think they're completely out of line there. She yeah. clearly didn't surprise him with that question. It clearly was was said, hey, do you want to talk about this? And yeah. he said yes. Yeah. And and look, they had a special relationship. 
Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough that my first NBA Finals I worked was uh, Kobe and the Lakers against uh, the Magic, uh, and then worked a couple others. And honestly, the best game that I was ever a part of in a TV truck was the Game 7, where uh, Kobe and Ron Artest, uh, I guess Metal World piece at that time, where mm-hmm. they, they won in Game 7 over Boston. But certainly we'll never forget uh, the competitive drive that that man brought and uh, the kindness he always showed to us when we would interview him and the crew, mm-hmm. uh, especially a lot of our camera operators who had been working the NBA for years and years and kind of came up with Kobe. He always said hi to them. He always knew their names and always wished them really well. Yeah. So thoughts and prayers to uh, not just Kobe and uh, you know his family, but to the others uh, and the families who, who lost lives in such a tragic uh, accident. We're going to have Mark Leishman after just a brief moment of silence. Welcome back to The Ship Show. As promised, because we don't lie too often on The Ship Show, joining us after a victorious weekend is Mark Leishman. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Good to be here. So winning on Australia Day, uh, particularly with with all uh, that has gone on back home recently, what does that mean to you and and, and how extra special did it make the victory? Yeah, it's um, any victories special um but you know being on australia day when the country is going through a crisis with the fires um so yeah it's pretty good to um to give you know the australian people some joy to or hopefully you know when they watch me um win the trophy know that uh you know i was partly doing it for them as well it's nice to uh to win for anyone but when you can do it for your country and it's 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 always nicer so I, I was very upset with myself on Sunday because, uh, as Lex and I mentioned in the last segment, we play the north course while you guys are playing the south course. And the hardest part for me is the tee shot on 10 because I'm right next to the first hole that you guys are playing. So I made sure I aimed right and swung right, and there was no chance of me going over there. But after we're done, like we just talked about, we go to the 15th hole and watch. And uh, I'm watching you come up, and you know we know which group it's going to be. And we were in the front row of, of sort of the, the right behind the flag, actually. And I'm watching you go off the tee, and I didn't see your tee shot, and I see you kind of go to the right. I'm like, no, 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 stop, straighten out, straighten out. Um, talk to me about that hole, and because and, the up and down you made was, was, was amazing. Yeah, there was a few good up and downs there on the back nine. Um, yeah, there's a lot of trouble left on that, that entire golf course, really. Um, well, I, I have a one-way miss. I, I go straight or right, um, which works pretty well on that golf course because all the trouble's left. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it's nice when you can um, get something in your hands that, um, that you know is, is taking out half the golf course and um, certainly did that. I mean, I drove it amazing the first three days, um, probably as good as I have in the last couple of years, to be honest. Um, and just, um, you know, it was the first time I'd used that the club under, under a pressure situation and um, it was, uh, you know, it did what I thought it was going to do. It was obviously I wanted to be on the fairway, but um, it missed a couple right, but it's, uh, that was the safe side of the golf course. Yeah, but t- talk to me about that. So, obviously, um, the rumors I've heard, and I don't know how much really people listen to what I say anyway, but you, you got the head sort of for the first time down to the President's Cup, didn't put it into play because literally you got it during that week, um, and then you got it into play shortly thereafter. Um, what is it like, though, the first time you need to see how it performs under pressure? Because that's got to be the true measure of it, right? Because sitting on the range, and, and yeah. especially the way you swing, you, sw- you stripe anything, but seeing how it performs under pressure, what, what was that kind of moment that you knew, yes, this is going to work for me? Yeah, it is. It's um, it's always interesting that first time under pressure. The, the head I got at the President's Cup was actually not the um, not the head that I'm using now. It was um, I'm using a, a different version of, of that head. Um, right. So I got that right before the Sony Open, and um, it meant the first two balls within two ball. Well, the first ball really, but that within two or three balls, I knew that that was that was that was my new driver. So. Um, Played, drove it pretty well at the Sony. Um, drove it really, really good the first three days, and and um, yeah, just like I say, it's nice to know where the misses are in on the on the driving range, you know. But um, but once you get into that pressure situation um, for the first time with a new club, it's always interesting, you know. Same with the putter. Um, I've been using the putter I'm using for 
that, that's part of a year now, so I, I know what that does. But um, well, it did it did the, pretty the good this week. Sure. One hundred fifty feet of uh, more than one hundred fifty feet of made putts on Sunday, uh, second most of anyone in the field. Uh, your most in over two years, and four point seven eight strokes gained putting are the most in the final round by a Farmers Insurance Open winner since they started tracking that back in two thousand four. Um, I don't. Are you going to like write that maybe and put that as like like on the wall? Most strokes gained in the final yeah. round of the Farmers. That'd be a nice little plaque to have. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It was. Um, Any time the hole looks that big, it's it's nice. It was funny early in the week. I was on the putting green just because I, I didn't putt great in, at, at the Sony Open, and um, so I wanted to do a bit of extra work early in the week to sort that out, and just sort of found something with with my putting. It reminded me of. Um, a couple of years ago in Malaysia when I actually won there, I had a really good feel with the putter and I hadn't had that for a while. So I had a good feeling early in the week, but you never know, like good feelings quite often turn out to be nothing. So totally. um, it was nice that it could uh, could relate to a you know a really good putting week and, and even better that it related to a trophy. Yeah, and, and putting under pressure. I mean, the birdie on 18, which obviously uh, at the time looked like it was an exclamation point, and then when uh, when Rom kind of went three in a row there, uh, turned out it was uh, kind of necessary. Um, talk a little bit about your your Chrome Soft golf ball. You know, the conditions, um, you know, Lex and I talked about it in the first segment. I literally couldn't hit the ball out there because I was cold and I was tight, uh, but it was foggy. It was not exactly, uh, you know, they got some rain on Monday, so the, the course was wet kind of to begin with, and, and not that anyone's going to feel sorry for those of us who live in San Diego with our weather, but we've we've had a little more rain in November, December than we've had in in recent years. Talk about how the golf ball performed for you, and and just knowing again in those clutch pressure moments that you had something you knew you could trust. Yeah, it, again, it's um it's nice to be able to trust what your equipment's going to do, and you know your golf balls, you're using it for every shot. Um, I love it that it's it's. I've just gone to a little bit lower spinning version one actually, but um change balls at the President's Cup. No, the Australian Open was my first week. Um, right. so this is my fourth event with that ball. Um, it's a little bit lower spinning ball, but it's still off the tee, but it, it still zips around the green, which I love about it. Um, it that, I mean, that's what I gauge a golf ball on is, um, yes, it's nice to hit it long off the tee, but if I've got a chip shot over a bunker that I need to spin, um, I want that. I, I want to know that's going to happen. Um, so that golf ball is um, is probably, you know, I've been with Callaway for five. This is my fifth year with Callaway. Yeah, we, we started um, the same year been, and, and combined. How many wins do we have since since we both joined Callaway? We have five wins. I know. Uh, four wins, sorry, four. I know. Well, um, I, I, so, I, I won the granddaddy with, with our team this year, so we could make that a six or we fifth. Had five, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll count that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so to be honest, um, that's one of the best things about, um, you know, that my change to Callaway is, is the golf ball. Um, you know, the dry, all, all the equipment's amazing, but, um, you know, the golf ball's probably, I'm very impressed with the Callaway golf ball, so... Um, that's yeah, big uh, big selling point for me. Yeah, and I, I'll say you know you you didn't have the perspective that we had on fifteen because we were there for about six or seven groups after we finished playing, and uh, just to give you an example, you left the ball below the hole for your your par putt. Um, Tiger stuffed one, but it went just past the hole and nearly three putted. Um, Rory did, I believe, three-putt because he got it above the hole. There were about three or four players that, that had a similar chip to what you did who who couldn't quite get to the putting surface, either ended up in that front right bunker um, or short of the green like you were, and they ran it a little further by because they had too much rollout on their golf ball or just it didn't check up for them. And when you're above that hole, you're, you're dead. No, no one made that putt that we saw. Yeah, most of um, – I feel like Torrey Pines, particularly the south course, is about managing your misses. Um, yeah, for sure. You can you can miss it, but if um, if you're missing it in the wrong spot, that's when you're going to shoot a big number. If you miss it in the right spot, you can skip, still score, which I proved on the weekend. Um, particularly with the putts, you know, if you've got downhill putts all day, you, you know, you're, you're playing defense. It's just um, you know you're lagging them, and you, you know you're trying to make them, but you can't really give yourself a really good opportunity. I feel like pretty much every putt I had on the weekend was um, I won't say an easy putt, but it was an uphill putt with not yeah. a whole lot of break. So. Um, that you know makes makes me look better than what I probably was on the weekend with the putter, but um, it's you know you still got to hit the putts and, and have them go in. But 
putting from below the hole is is um, is a huge thing around there. Yeah, and and a shout out to Ken Tackett of the PGA Tour Rules team. That that team always does a great job. But I know Ken probably wouldn't want me to say it, but I'll say it anyway. He set up the the back nine on on the south. And there were no setup issues, and and let's just let's just remember that in a year and a half when we're here for the U.S. Open, shall we? Yes, let's do. <laughs> I mean, he he really did a nice job setting up the course, particularly with with yeah, the extra, right. yeah, just with the extra bit of you know, like like a perfect example is is Rom, who was behind you on fifteen, hit into the left bunker, but he hit it on the downslope, and when he walked up. Uh, to the green, he got visibly, visibly angry and kind of slapped his his thighs because he knew that that there was very little chance of getting up and down because you can't get it close from that downhill lie. We saw another player a couple of groups before be in that same position, actually left it in the bunker because that 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 yeah. pin was tucked so far over. But it just it like you said, you have to miss in the right place. All right, a couple other quick questions because I know you got a lot of other media to do today, which is not a bad problem to have, right? You would take this every week having to do media after a win. I'll- I'd take this about 10 or 15 times a year for sure. <laughs> Agreed. You know, a lot of players say they think about being on the ship show as they're coming down uh, the 18th hole as they're about to win, but uh, I'm sure that probably uh, wasn't in your mind this time. But one thing that you told us last time, I think you told Amanda uh, when she did an interview with you after a previous win, is uh, the payoff to your children, that your children see you get a big check and that they, what What was the, what did you, what'd you give them, like $100 or $5 or $1? What was it before? Uh, well, they used to think that when I won a tournament, I won. I won a hundred dollars. Yes, that, that the winner's check was a hundred dollars. Yes, um, my boys are now old enough to know better. Oh no! Um, so they know they yeah. So that's disappointing. But um, but we um, they actually want to go uh, go to the sports shop this afternoon. So we're going to go to the sports shop and pick something out. So what what, what are they um, into? What what sports are they into? Well, Harvey's into golf. Okay. Um, and Ollie, my little fella, he's into. He loves baseball. Loves nice. swimming. A little chilly to do that at the moment. Um, it is. But yeah, anything, anything with a ball, the boys love. All right. Well, if you need golf stuff, you don't have to go buy it. I mean, we know people who can help send it to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll take advantage of that down the road. And then, and then the second part of it is. Um, after, you know, I didn't get back in town because we do the PGA show, and then I went up to Chicopee. Uh, didn't get in town till late, late, late Thursday night. Um, Friday kind of had a, a crazy day. But last year, I remember that Paige and I ran into you twice at Bird Rock Coffee, right? You know, around the corner from my house yeah. and, and right on the way back yeah. to, to your hotel. Did you did you keep the Bird Rock tradition alive this year? I did, yes. I was there. I actually stacked the cups up in my car. Um, <laughs> so I could keep count of how many I had for the week. I think I had about six or seven coffees for the week. Oh, nice. It was, uh, great coffee there. So good uh, overlooking the, the beach there. And, um, yeah, it's just nice to, to get a, a really good coffee shop on the way to the golf course. So yeah. it was... Um, and, and, pretty cool. Yeah, we actually walked there, walked there um, over the, the winter break with my daughter Amelia, who uh, I had to push her, and, and it was like going there super easy because it's straight downhill, and I didn't realize how uphill it was until trying to return home. So what's your upcoming schedule like? I know you're not playing Phoenix this week, but I always, um, especially in years where, where there's Olympics, uh, and we saw last year with all the, con- the condensed schedule of the majors, where, where are we going to see you the next couple weeks? I've actually got two weeks off, um, so I'm you. not playing Pebble Beach either. Um, that, that was my original schedule, and um, I was kind of, I'm, I was kind of fifty-fifty on Phoenix. I was arming and arming, and didn't end up entering. And then um, kind of glad I didn't. It's nice to be able to celebrate your wins. Um, my first win on the PGA Tour, I played the week after, and um, it was one of my favourite tournaments the week after, and. Yeah. I don't regret it, but I just wish I had celebrated more because when mm-hmm. uh, when it's a week when a week's passed, you've settled down a bit, and you know probably don't uh, celebrate as hard as as you should. But yeah, um, good point. I made up for that with my last few wins, and um, actually get, actually driving up to Washington D.C. tomorrow. Uh, me and Audrey, we're going to go to a hockey game, go to a Capitals game, and uh, nice. go out for a nice dinner and just spend the night up there. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. So we'll we'll celebrate this one, but uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have to worry about celebrating it's, it's it's a good problem so then we'll see you at uh at, at riviera in mexico those are gonna be your next two uh sorry yes uh, i got sidetracked massively that's there, all right thinking about I'm, hockey. I'm, I'm thinking about um, hockey myself yeah um yes i'm playing riviera then i'll play mexico um then i've got a week off and i'll play bay hill on the players fantastic uh, followed by the match play and the masters so yeah good schedule coming up i'm that- uh you know, want, you, you really want to be fresh coming into um, into the the Masters, um, and then you know it's a pretty hectic schedule from there on. So yeah. uh, with all the majors and the Olympics and the playoffs, and 
all of a sudden we'll be in September and um, talking about the next season. So, but then we'll be in Napa yeah, Valley yeah, again. Then we'll be in Napa Valley again, and we'll be able to uh, to to have more of that 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 good red grape. Exactly. Yeah, and hopefully I can go a couple better than I went there last year. So I, I know third there last year. So yeah, but no, those uh, those grapes quite taste quite nice. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, I have a little deal for you before we let you go. I'm going to go to Bird Rock, and and you can just I'll, I'll work with with. Bjorn and, and Bud to get the exact blend of coffee that you want. Um, we need to help celebrate with you here. We've never had Leishman Lager out here in California. Right. So um, I know there's kind of some weird rules about shipping things across state lines, so we'll just pretend we're not doing that. But maybe if you happen to bring them to L.A., we'll just happen to, to make sure we have some, some Bird Rock coffee for you. All right, I might happen to uh, throw some in the suitcase. <laughs> yeah, it just could happen out there because we're, we're going to be yeah we're going to be in L.A. and then uh, uh, we obviously uh, always see each year at the players. And I do want to try to do right. cool. I do want to try to do the video where to see how much of a Leishman Lager someone can handle as before your ball touches the ground off a driver because you do hit it quite far and quite high. All right, that'd, that'd be fun. Oh, I mean, yeah. we spoke about that at the players, didn't we? I we did. We did at least one down. Yeah, we talked about yeah. it last year, so we're gonna we're gonna actually <laughs> do it this year. Mark Leishman, congratulations yeah. so good. much on uh, on another PGA Tour win. Enjoy DC. Enjoy uh, the hockey, and we always appreciate you spending some time with us. Cool. No worries. Thanks a lot. Good chatting. All right, and now we're gonna join the second winner on a busy weekend for Team Callaway in the PGA Tour. Here's an interview with Madeline Sagstrom. Innovation comes to those who defy convention. We used advanced artificial intelligence and new materials to change the way distance is designed forever. Radical thinking has engineered a driver with unconventional forgiveness and unlocked the next level of speed. New distance is out there. It takes a maverick to find it. Maverick, from Callaway, the number one driver on major worldwide tours. Madeline, on the line with us now, congratulations on your first LPGA win. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So what's the last 24 hours been like? Because uh, I don't think a lot of people understand all that you have to do, kind of the obligations after a win, because most of us have not won professional golf tournaments before. Well, no, it's been very hectic. My phone's been going off nonstop, and, uh, well, I started right away afterwards. I... Uh, got sprayed with champagne and then it was uh, duties, 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 but obviously, I mean, great duties, running around, talk, taking pictures, talking. I, I was able to send a few autographs, uh, saw the members, did media uh, interviews, saw some more members. I know we drove back home, actually, and then uh, been trying to let it all sink in and just figure out what actually happened. So what's the coolest text message you got? What's the one that you, you looked at and be like, wow, this person sent me something? It's a lot, actually. Um, I got a message from Monica, which is always, I mean, if you get a message from Monica, you're doing something good. Um, Robert, my um, old mentor, texted me too. And just there's just so many people at home that uh, are following me that I didn't know was following me. They've been reaching out and just um, just all the love and support from all over the world. It's been crazy. So I've I really appreciated every single one of the messages for sure. And, and I think the message from Monica is extra special because she's over. You'd be able to explain it better than me, Mike. Who Annika and Mike appeared on the Ship Show last week, which I know you're going to go back and listen to the archives. Um, but they're over in Sweden. Annika got one of the highest honors you can get in in Swedish sports with a lifetime achievement award. Do do you? know the awards she got and can you kind of provide a little context to to our audience oh you're asking me how questions right now i'll definitely go back and listen to the interview but um i don't really know too much about this award to be honest uh, i guess i'll have to do my research about that too yeah mike mike kind of you know showed it to me that it was basically um the version of the he called it basically the swedish espies getting a lifetime achievement award um, which is which oh, okay. is pretty awesome, and I know this was a very last second thing. And on our last podcast with Mike and Annika, we had to bleep out where they were going and why they were going because Mike didn't want anyone to know uh, that they were flying over there. I think mm. they were only going for like a day or two, uh, which is which is quite a long way to go for a day or two. Um, let's get into to your your performance on the golf course. Here's the stat, and this is from my buddy Justin Ray at the Fifteenth Club. It's said that um, you hit all 14 fairways Sunday en route to victory, which is the second time you did that this week. Now, 
last season you ranked 127th on the LPGA in driving accuracy. <laughs> Madeline, what happened this week that potentially changed your driving outlook? Well, I've been working very hard this off season. We, my coach and I, home first, and we kind of took a different approach to my uh, my driving uh, stats because I um, I've always been able to hit the ball far, and we were we were talking about it's like okay, the best players in the world hit more fairways than me. What do we do? So I um, I've taken down. I'm, I'm trying to hit a little bit less up on it right now, and kind of keep it more around one degree up on it. And I mean, obviously, the new driver is just absolute magic. The Maverick is insane so i love the sound and i'm getting really really confident with it obviously uh hitting 14 fairways under pressure is never an easy easy task but um i was able to do it and gave myself a lot of chances to um put myself up for birdie opportunities and it was it was really 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 cool actually um to have that many opportunities so you're using a maverick driver 10 and a half degree loft with a fuji speeder shaft um barry and bjorn first showed you this and had you test it in December when they were down in South Florida. Um, what were your initial reactions to the driver and how quickly did you make the the transition into it? Well, my biggest reaction right away was the sound. I, I love the sound of the Maverick. It just sounds, it sounds very powerful. I'm kind of, I kind of one of those people that li- likes the little softer sound, like not the plingy, the plingy sound. So um, it was just sounded so great off the club face right away. And, um, I worked I worked hard on it, and I think that, I mean, take takes some time to get confident with it, um, with all the new clubs in general, but um, this week I really, when I had it in the bag, I was like, okay, I got this. Like, I, the fairway was really wide in my mind, and I could just swing at it, and, um, and I knew I was going to hit it. But, I mean, that's that's a remarkable improvement. I get it. It's small sample size. And, obviously, you were playing not just great with the driver because you won. But, I mean, from 127th on the LPGA Tour to, to two of your four rounds, not missing a fairway, I mean, that's that's staggering. Uh, you also did a little work with Barry, um, again, at the Diamond Resorts, where you were not in the field, but you will be next year uh, because of your win. What, what tweaks did you make from the initial fitting to now? Because, you know, these are in stores now, and people can go try them, and obviously – your success is just another reason someone should go try the Maverick driver. But I'm curious what tweak you made because I did not drive the ball well this weekend at all, and I might need to make some tweaks. <laughs> well, I since I was trying to change my mechanics a little bit during the offseason, I'm um, trying to hit a little bit less up on it. I kind of lost a little bit of height on it. So actually I'm playing it at, instead of 10.5, I'm actually playing at 11.5. I set it up one degree higher, um, and it's just... It just made me not trying to lean back too much on it and um, trying to get it up in there, and I could just swing more freely. Um, so that was what we were really working on because I was trying a few different heads out to see if there was a difference. But um, I'm playing the I'm, I'm, the one I'm playing now is just was just magic with a, a degree more loft on it. So magic maverick, I like it. Mm, perfect. <laughs> you, you could work for us in the marketing team because I don't think any one of us have come up with that. We did come up with unleashed yesterday. For uh, for for oh, one Mark Leishman, sense. yeah, that was pretty good. We also learned in marketing. Uh, Ethan taught us. We learned how to put the two dots above the O. We learned that there's a command on the Apple Macintosh keyboard where you hit a bunch of keys and you end up with the two dots uh, above the O. So that was pretty cool. Um, talk to me about the oh, fair. Yeah, for sure. Talk to me about the fairway wood. Um, I am I'm super excited for these fairway woods. I think for people to to get them, you know, the first time that AI uh, in, in a fairway. I just think it's so such a unique, um, you know offering what have you found with the 15 degree that you have in the bag uh well i mean that three wood is absolutely pure um i I, i've some i think that for me uh with the way i swing it the hardest shot for me in the bag has been hitting a three off off the ground and i mean i've worked on this for years and years and years and it's just the new one is just the maverick just launched a little bit higher and i i don't feel like i have to um like construct the strike too much i can just really swing freely um and i hit i mean under pressure yesterday i hit a phenomenal shot on that was 14 and it's just it's just like when a club does what you want it to do it just brings you so much confidence and just it's literally everything i can ask for wow i'm telling you we need to get you out here in our marketing team uh jaws wedges (laughs) use three of them 50 54 and 58 um how long have you had those in the bag, and how useful were they down in uh, in Boca? Well, those are the ones I've had the longest. I, I think I got them in the end of last uh, season. I've been yeah. playing with them a lot, and I, I mean, 
the flight of them is um, is amazing. I felt like when I first got them in the bag, I could take the flight down a little bit because I, I struggle a little bit to hit it too high with the wedges sometimes too high and too much spin. So bringing the flight down kind of helped me get that forward kick rather than just straight up and sip it back too much. So um, I think they're magic. And I actually worked a little bit uh, with uh, Barry and Bjorn last week uh, to fix a little bit on my lies and on all my clubs. And that's just, put it to an extra level so i was really happy with them if you had to choose between barry and bjorn who are you taking i'm taking both of them yeah good answer They're the sweetest <laughs> good answer they really are um odyssey o works yeah. marksman black stroke lab putter um the stability of the stroke lab shaft has been you know well documented you're seeing more and more of them out on tour but you were rolling it great yesterday what what's your you know the marksman is so easy to align what is sort of your your when you have to make a pressure putt which obviously you had to yesterday what are your thoughts kind of as you you know you have this piece of equipment available to you and then how you use it to to, to be successful well first of all i'm not i'm not one of the I'm not one of those that switches a lot of putters ever. Um, I've played with this putter. Well, I, I changed the shaft in it. And yeah, it's so in the stroke year, lab, yeah. The, the stroke, stroke lab was just, I mean, I just saw a huge difference in speed, and especially long putts right away, and it just gave me a lot of confidence. Um, but I think what I, I'm, I'm a really good ball starter um, in putting, so when I stand over a pressure putt, all I think of is, like, I know I'm going to start the ball online, so I just go into it. Just perfect speed, perfect speed, perfect speed. That's all I'm thinking about. Perfect speed. There's someone in our office who could use a little help from you. Uh, Chrome Soft True Viz <laughs> Golf Ball. So the Chrome Soft True Viz Golf Ball, this is the second win, but one could argue that this is, uh, I'm not going to rank them, but Tom Watson used it to win the Masters Par 3. Obviously, it's not an official event, mm. but that was still pretty amazing. Um, and then you won, you know, certainly the first to win a professional tournament with the Truviz golf ball. What drew you to the Truviz technology? Well, first of all, I think it's just amazing that I can, like, I am the only one in the world that plays this, that logo on the ball. Well, yeah, can, can you tell people? Part of it myself. Yeah, tell people the story behind that. Well, I, I was approached by Baron and Bjorn, and they're asking me, do you want to try the Trivis ball? And I was like, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've i always seen it, and I think it's a very cool, and I was very interested in the uh, technology behind it, too. And um, and I was like, okay, well, what can we what can we do with it? And they said, you can do literally what you want to. Um, and I've always marked my ball with the Scorpio um, sign, because it's both an M and a, I'm a Scorpio, too. So I've done that since I was... 13 i think so we got that in blue um and it's on there and i mean i haven't looked back since i just think it's so much fun uh, being able to give give a ball to a fan knowing that the only way they could have gotten this ball is for me it's uh it's really been fun for me in that way and i i love how the ball looks especially when you roll a putt perfectly oh my gosh it's like the constant direct feedback is just wonderful yeah that and the other thing is is some of the whether it's out of the bunker or just some short game shots where you're really trying to be soft and create some spin do you like seeing that true viz pattern kind of giving you the feedback when when it's kind of spinning for you off the off the wedges oh yeah no it's it's really nice it um it just looks it looks perfect all the time and it's uh um I know people ask me, they're like, they're like, oh, that's just interesting. I was like, well, I'm never going to play your ball, am I? It's like, so it's, uh, it's really helped me in a lot of parts of my game, and I feel like it's, um, it's made my game look more fun. And it's, I don't know, I just, I just love the ball, and it's, it's been great. And how many, how many people are, do you think are going to come up to you in the next couple of weeks and be like, hey, do you have an extra sleeve of those so I could try them in a practice round or do, you know, stuff like that? Because I'm sure that that's, uh, look, it's a copycat world, and when something works for somebody, we're all going to try it. Oh, no, for sure. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, I always keep saying I, I don't send balls to people. I just I, I encourage people to come watch us, and I'm more than happy to give away balls to fans and stuff. But um, for me, it's all about coming to watch, support women's golf, supporting the LPGA, and supporting Callaway. For sure. What's your What's your upcoming schedule? Because, you know, the LPGA is such a worldwide tour with so many great events. What are Where are we going to see you on the road the next couple months? Um, heading to Australia this weekend. Um, I obviously my change my schedule changed a little bit after this when I wasn't in um, everything the whole season. So um, I am going to sit down and look at it. But I'll play two events in Australia and then uh, happy to uh, go to both Thailand and Singapore after that. So nice. Will we, uh, will so we see uh, out here? Will yeah, we see out here at the fun. Kia? 
Definitely. I'll definitely go to Kia. I love that place. Okay. Well, that's like one exit from our office. So since you've already given us Maverick uh, is magic, um, you've told us about the three wood, how pure it is, and, and now the whole Scorpio truth is and, um, and, and how you're, you don't change putters often. How about if we try to find some time that we come on down here and do some content with us and let's try to, uh, let's try to help some other golfers too. Yeah, definitely. That would love that. That would be awesome. All right. Well, we will talk to Bjorn, and we will work around your schedule, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever works best for you. Let's get a couple hours at the Ely Callaway Performance Center, and we can. We will guarantee that everybody will be able to hit 14 out of 14 fairways every single time if they just follow your advice. Does that sound fair? <laughs> Sounds like a lot of pressure, but sure. <laughs> well, it's not on you. You've already proven you can do it. It's it's certainly going to be, you know, it's, it, we know it's not the club's fault. We know it's not the ball's fault. So all that leaves it is the person who's hitting it. And uh, look, Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> I, I think I hit one out of 14 fairways yesterday. So I'm looking for any help I can get. Madeline Sexton, congratulations so much on your first of what we hope will be many wins on the LPGA Tour. Congratulations from all of us here in Carlsbad. And we can't wait to see you in a couple months. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What's going on, everyone? I'm Steven from Callaway Golf, here to tell you about the new Maverick Driver family. Callaway's R&D team set out to create a family of high-performing metal woods that defy conventional thinking. The result? A driver family with absolutely no trade-offs in ball speed, aerodynamics, or forgiveness. It all starts with our new SS20 flash face designed by artificial intelligence. AI. The high strength and exotic FS2S titanium insert is 6 grams lighter than our previous face and stronger than traditional titanium. Add in our industry leading jailbreak technology, the two vertical bars connecting the crown and the sole, and you get a more efficient transfer of energy to the golf ball, leading to consistently higher ball speeds. Not only that, the combination helps provide tighter downrange dispersion, or simply put, straighter shots. Not only did we use AI to design a new face, we also used our supercomputer to enhance acoustics. AI improved the head's internal structure to create a powerful, confidence-inspiring sound. In the Maverick Driver, we've improved the aerodynamics with our new Cyclone design. The club head features a dramatic sweep upward in the rear and a flatter T2C triaxial carbon crown. Together, they reduce the drag to increase head speed to help you hit longer drives. It's available in 9, 10, 5, and 12 degree lofts with your choice of the new Project X Evenflow Riptide Shaft or the UST Helium Black and comes wrapped with a Golf Pride Tour Velvet Aligned Silver Grip. If you're looking for a driver that combines the most advanced technologies to deliver all-out performance, a Maverick driver should be in your bag. Be a Maverick and try one today. What a week. Two victories for Team Callaway. Lex is back with me here. Um, if you want to know all the clubs that both of those players used in victory, including golf balls, you know, you can order your Truviz golf balls, you can order but your Chrome no, Soft golf. You can't, you can't order, order her. She said that. Yeah. You have to go see her at a tournament, yeah. which I encourage everyone to do. Uh, CallawayGolf.com, OdysseyGolf.com. Check out your nearest uh, retailer. The Maverick family's coming. Um, it is. We, you know, I'm, I'm a little course. bummed because, you know, I don't know why the headline is an unleashed, right? <laughs> that would have been a good Yeah, time. but, you know, with Ma it wouldn't really work with Madeline also. Well, you could have done something made to unleash because you could take Madeline and go with the first four letters and call it made. Okay. I don't okay. know. There's but something that could be done. There. I did like, a little work. I did like how she called it magic. Uh, yes. The Maverick is magic. So. Yes. I think we determined Madeline definitely could help our, our yeah. slogan department we could, out. We could use her. We could use her. Because remember when, uh, when Maverick and Halo was here he gave us a couple really bad slogans oh, yeah. uh, in our all employee meeting so so maybe madeline's the next uh, person to yeah. do that thursday is going to be a very special it is episode gonna be of one of show. my favorite episodes it's be a little sad i'm predicting but uh if anyone follows uh penny mm -hmm. who's uh, our our admin extraordinaire and does so much for us she's uh she's moving to alabama alabama um yeah her husband brett got a job out there so she is relocating to the southeast so yeah. um, uh we've asked her to come on the show pretty much since we started the show mm -hmm. and she's refused and she's not committed to talk on Thursday's show. She's, she's just agreed to be here and sit. To say hello. I think we got wave. that out of her. I yeah, don't know. That's true. But uh, excited to talk to Penny. Who else do we have on Thursday? Anyone else? Not yet, but you know what? I can book other people. Okay. I'm just yeah. curious. We have such a good run going right we now. Do I'm just curious who else uh, we want to get else in. Who going to pop in? Yeah. I have an idea. Okay, good. I have an idea. Well, we will see you on Thursday. Thanks so much for listening to The Ship Show. <laughs>